today in our 2014 Honda Civic Si, we'll be having a look at and installing the Kurt Class 1 trailer hitch receiver, part number C11391. Here's what our hitch looks like installed. As you can see, it's tucked up nice and tight up against our fascia here, giving us optimal ground clearance, but yet still have enough clearance around our receiver to make it an ideal hitch to use at bike racks and cargo carriers. On the side of our receiver, you'll find our industry standard half inch diameter hitch pin hole to secure any of our hitch mounted accessories. A pin and clip is included with this hitch. On the end of our receiver, you'll find this nice collar here that's welded on to help reinforce the receiver opening and to give us a nice clean look on the back of the hitch. This hitch features a 200 pound max gross tongue weight rating, which is a mount forcing down and a 2,000 pound max gross trailer weight rating, which is the amount it can pull. You'll want to consult with the owner's manual of your Civic and not exceed what the vehicle is rated for. One thing I'd like to note, if we are planning to use this hitch for a non-trailer application, such as a bike rack or a cargo carrier, Kurt does require the use of a stabilization strap to help support the load. We have those available separately on our website as part number 18050. Welded onto the bottom of our receiver, this is plate style safety chain loops here. There's a decent size opening. If our trailer is equipped with small chains, we should be able to hook onto these without a problem. Now for a few measurements to better assist you in choosing any hitch mounted accessory you may need, such as a bike rack or a cargo carrier. You're looking at about 12 inches from the ground to the top of the receiver opening, and about six inches from the center of the hitch pin hole to the remote part of the back bumper. Now that we've gone over some features, we'll show you how to get it installed. To begin our install, we need to remove this underbody panel here. There are several fasteners that hold it in place. Okay, on the side of it closest to the front of the car, we have three 10 millimeter bolts that we need to remove. On the back side of our panel, we have four plastic fasteners that we need to remove. The way that these work is use a trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver and we'll pop out the center section. Once the center section is popped loose, the whole plug will come out. Okay, on the driver's side of the vehicle, hidden in the mud flap, we have a fifth plastic fastener that we need to remove in order for the panel to come all the way out. Okay, once we have the one that's inside the mud flap removed, we can find the one that actually holds the panel in place, hidden underneath the mud flap right here. With that released, the panel will come down and out of the way. Okay, now we need to lower our exhaust so we have access to our heat shield. In order to do that, we have an exhaust hanger here towards the front, another one here towards the back. We'll spray some lubricant on them so they'll slide off easier. Now we'll use a pry bar and we'll pry it off. Okay, now we need to remove our exhaust heat shield. We'll have four bolts that are just like this one. They are 10 millimeter. Okay, we're looking at our driver's side frame rail. Our passenger side will look very similar to this one. We have three holes we need to concern ourselves with. This large one here is our access hole, and then our hitch hardware will go through the one that's closer to that, and then the next one closest to the rear. We'll take our fish wire, we'll go through the rearmost hole, and it'll come out our access hole. Take our square spacer block, stick it on the fish wire, Stick it inside the frame rail. Thread our carriage bolt on. 
push it inside. And we'll pull it down. Can remove the fish wire now. Now we'll take our handle nut, put a slight bend in it. We'll stick it through the access hole and then right over our hole right here. We'll do the same process for the other side. Now for a recovery hook here in the middle, we'll slide our U-bolt on over that. Okay, this is our underbody panel. I marked out in it the area we need to trim out according to the instructions so we can actually have this back in place with the hitch installed. You can use a utility knife or scissors to cut this. I'm using a rotary tool because I feel like it's a little bit faster and I can make a cleaner cut. Okay, I marked out in our exhaust heat shield the same area that we need to cut out. I'm using a pair of tin snips for it. Now this is gonna have sharp edges after you cut it, so make sure you wear gloves while doing this. With our heat shield cut, we can reinstall it. We'll only be using three of the bolts because we cut out a section that had the fourth bolt in it. All right, now we'll reinstall our underbody panel Make sure our panel goes underneath our fascia like it's supposed to. Now with an extra set of hands, we'll raise our hitch in a position. On the driver's side, we'll just secure it with our hex nut. On the passenger side, we have to raise the hitch with the exhaust at the same time. And we'll use our hex nut to hold it in place. Okay, now we'll take our hex bolt and our large conical tooth washer, place it on the bolt. The teeth will face up towards the hitch and we'll thread that into our handle nut. Okay, now we'll install the nuts on our U-bolts. Now we'll snug up our hardware. Our hex bolt here uses a three quarter inch socket. Our hex nuts uses an 11 16 socket. For our U-bolt, we'll use a 9 16 socket for the nuts. Now we'll torque all of our hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. On the U-bolt, we wanna make sure we tighten it as evenly as possible. All right, now we'll reinstall our exhaust hanger. And that completes our look at an installation of the Kurt Class 1 trailer hitch receiver, part number C11391 on our 2014 Honda Civic Si.